Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are, and welcome to this session at the ACT Cash Management Conference 2021. Uh, my name is Chris van Dijl, and I am very much looking forward to moderating this session. Um, we have heard and read a lot about APIs or application programming interfaces, but how do they work in the real world and are they really worth all the hype? I am joined today by three treasurers, Tanya, Janko and Patrick, who have implemented APIs in their organization and I'm looking forward to hear from them on their experiences. But before we kick off, we have a couple of um, housekeeping notes that I'm sure you will be aware with already from the previous session at the conference. Uh, first of all, we would be uh, very happy to answer your questions. Um, there's a tool bar on the right hand side in your screen, which should be on this side, I believe. Um, and um, please feel free to submit your questions. Uh, we will try to answer as many as we can as we can uh, as we go along. Also, please be aware that this session is recorded and will be made available for replay afterwards uh, and will be uh, available to view for 14 days uh, after the session. Um, please do get engaged with the ACT on social media at, uh, at ACT update or treat us at uh, hashtag ACT cash management. So far for all the bureaucracy on that, let's get to our panel. Um, Tanya, let's start with you. Um, could you please introduce yourself and enlighten us with um, how you have implemented APIs? Certainly. Thanks, Chris. Um, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. It is uh, morning here in the US where I'm based. And uh, my name is Tanya Kuznetsova. I'm a treasury director at Baptist Healthcare, a nonprofit organization that provides healthcare services in, based in Pensacola, Florida. Um, I'm personally based in North Carolina, and uh, I'm happy to be here today. Um, I have over 16 years of experience in cash management and in treasury, and um, I worked um, in different various industries and in different countries throughout my career. And um, a lot of my experience comes from retail industry, retail and wholesale. Uh, and uh, I worked in very large organizations that were changing at a very um, rapid pace. So uh, technology and uh, automation was uh, always a big thing. And I'm a big fan of uh, everything related to innovation and technology. Um, although I do think that technology on its own does not solve all problems, of course, and you have to uh, be aware of change management procedures and organizational structure and um, everything that goes, goes along with this change. Um, so I guess I can say a few words about how um, I dealt with the API solutions in, in, in my experience. And it's going to be a little bit different from um, open banking APIs that we are talking today. Uh, so I think I should say a few words about how, how it is different. So um, APIs in general is not a new thing in the market at all. And it's been around for, for a couple of decades, I would think. Um, the novelty of uh, APIs um, that we're discussing today is open banking and how banks make their APIs public. Uh, because mostly in, um, in the past, they would only do like partner APIs or internal APIs uh, to connect their systems. Um, so right now, I think it's a very, um, it, it's, a, it's a huge progress that it's uh, the APIs connections are becoming publicly available. Uh, so in my experience, when I was um, at a large retailer in uh, Russia, we, we had a supply chain finance program and we wanted to um, connect this platform that we're using to our banks. So I would say we did what is uh, what we would call partner API. And that was um, a connection to make sure our systems are integrated. So the reason we wanted to do that back then is um, because we wanted to make this solution, the supply chain solution, uh, multi-bank solution, like bring different partners into this platform and allow um, a lot of, you know, allow, allow flexibility for our suppliers to use whatever partner they want to use for their financing. So we had a few banks joining this platform and we had about um, 600 suppliers back then. I think it's much more right now. It's, it's been expanding. It's been pretty successful so far. So um, 
we the banks that were willing to connect through APIs uh, were the ones that benefited the most, I think, in that arrangement, because they were able to connect seamlessly and see all transactions that we were confirming for the financing. And they were able to see different invoices from different, like a large pool of suppliers. So I think even though they did have some concerns that they're going to, you know, be exposed to, to a larger competition that they usually are exposed. I think in the end of the day, they ended up with having larger share of uh, our um, invoices because they just, um, work transparently in this um, solution. So um, that was my, well, also I have to say that it was, it was a tough um, pro project in general because we also tried to use APIs to integrate this platform into our ERP system. And this is a challenging process. So I think, well, when I'm thinking back now, if um, open banking was available back then, it was like maybe 2016, 2017, and banks were not on board at all with opening their APIs to public. Um, so if it was available back then, maybe we wouldn't even have to go through integration to our ERP system, but rather just use banking uh, and payments options straight through our supply chain finance platform and not even bother with um, exchanging those um, statuses between all of these systems. So, so yeah, so my hope is that it's a very uh, good sign that we're moving in this direction. And um, I'm looking forward to, the, to this discussion that we're going to have Fantastic. today. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Tanya, thank you very much for um, uh, that, that comprehensive uh, overview. And it's really good because it, we're, we're, this is a very global session, right? We're in, I'm in Dubai, we are in the US talking about Russia. It's very good. We're really global here, so this is good. Um, Janko, can you please uh, introduce yourself and tell me about your experiences that you went through uh, and on the API journey for your organization? Yeah, many thanks, Chris, and uh, this time, good afternoon from Switzerland. Um, I'm uh, Janko. I'm heading the treasury operations of Autoneum. Autoneum is a tier one automotive supplier. We are globally active worldwide with roughly, I would say, uh, 1.7, 1.8 billion in sales uh, in Swiss francs. Um, our API journey started, I would say, roughly uh, two years ago when, uh, and you will hear this name very often from me, not because I'm, I'm selling it, just because they started with us the journey. So it was JP Morgan. They uh, contacted us and, uh, you know, gave us the usual overview, what's new, what's coming up, what are they working on? And they mentioned these APIs to me. And so for us, it was a bit more of the classical way. We started to have a look at open banking and that was to receive on our um, US and Canada and to some degree Mexico um, business, a real time, same time um, balance, bank account balance overview. And um, uh, that is perhaps something where you say, well, we you, you might have MT940 and we do, we have SAP as global ERP and as TMS. So we have an integrated payment factory. We receive the statements into SAP. Nevertheless, as you know, SAP is an oil tanker. So it's not something you steer around easily. And um, so in, in this time we said, okay, there's something which might enhance our ecosystem. Let's have a look at this. And so we started with um, an interesting approach. They provided us with, with uh, this API topic. And I said, that's nice, but I, you know, I have SAP. I can't program it this easily. I can't just benefit of your data feed. I need to consume this data somewhere. And that's something I like really at JP Morgan. They obviously saw this requirement to open up banking. And they said, okay, if we must do this by law, let's make it a USP. And so they provided us also with a front end tool, which is nice. And um, although they also offered something for SAP, uh, we said, well, we don't have the so-called Fiori technology yet, but they also provided us an excellent. So we started with a simple Excel they provide us where we can refresh the button. And uh, then immediately we see our balances for the full Autoneum North America organization in real time. And that's great. It's, it's something where, where you say, well, that's uh, pretty basic, but um, indeed this real time helped us a lot, especially if you think about last year, Corona, tough business also for automotive, hard uh, decline in the business. So we had really a, a rough year, like many of you most likely, but for automotive, it was really difficult. And so um, having this 
real-time visibility helped us also in discussions with the finance team in the US. Hey, you just received something from Ford or you, you, you received a bigger credit from GM. Why don't you repay your short-term loan now? You, we always agreed you sent money back home immediately and so on. And now I just saw this credit and this credit and they said, okay, uh, obviously you have a good transparency. And so they understood we are, we are also challenging them. And that was a big enabler of more intensive discussions with them. So that's how the journey started. Um, uh, and uh, we are also looking at different um, plugins with them now. We are currently having a look at the GPI solution, tracking the uh, payments in real time, seeing the statuses, which is something very important for us because we have a lot of payments you would like to track, uh, the big, big amounts, cross-border SWIFT payments. So that's something nice they, they can provide. And next phase is to uh, work on multibank with them, not only benefit of real-time data from them, but also allow us via this simple plugin to retrieve also data from, in this case, we are discussing with HSBC or with Commerzbank in one file. And that's, of course, something where we say, well, in this time where SAP is not, or we are not that fine SAP yet on, on S4 HANA, we at least have something outside SAP, but it allows to enhance the ecosystem benefits. That's a bit about the journey. And just um, one last comment in regards to the title, a solution looking for a problem, interesting. And, and I, I like this challenging title. Um, for us, we have been surprised just some weeks ago, we have been awarded by TMI for this um, project on APIs we did with JP Morgan. So that shows me that this topic, no matter what, what point of view we might have in, in the end of the session, but obviously this topic is quite in the focus of, 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 of corporates. It seems to be more and more in the focus of banks. So um, uh, for me, a good start so far, a lot more to come. And um, yeah, so looking for the, for the exchange with, with all of you today. Fantastic. Thank you, Danko. Very good to see that um, uh, the API really um, significantly increase the visibility of your cash balances and not just increase the visibility, but even allow you to take intraday action on cash balances overseas, uh, rather than waiting for the MT940 perhaps the next day. And that's probably a huge change uh, operationally as well, uh, especially as you said, if the company uh, is going to a rough time as most companies have done uh, through the uh, past few years, especially the last year, of course. Um, so that's very good to hear. Um, over to Patrick over in Ireland. Uh, Patrick, please introduce yourself and uh, uh, tell us about your API journey. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, my name is Patrick Murphy and I head the uh, treasury function here at Avalon. So Avalon is the third largest aircraft lessor in the world. Uh, we're headquartered out of Dublin, have offices in Singapore, Hong Kong, New York and Dubai. And we manage a fleet of about 840 aircraft, primarily uh, narrow-bodied um, new technology aircraft, um, so uh, diverse portfolio, uh, 150 clients worldwide. Um, so similar to Yanko, we began our journey on APIs with JP Morgan back in 2019. Um, a little bit different in that we were lucky enough to have a fairly um, unique indigenous um, TMS provider called Salmon, who partnered with JP Morgan on that journey. So our build was uh, a little bit different in that we were looking to do the direct in interface with JP Morgan and utilize the open banking um, platform through Salmon. Um, so look, in the first instance, um, we were just pulling uh, real-time balances from our accounts uh, across the world, uh, EMEA, APJ, the US, the, the full uh, cohort. Um, so the next step after that was kind of to look at real-time transactions, so intraday transactions. So while we got the uh, balances reporting uh, across the line quite quickly, and it was looked well-timed, similar to Anko, uh, just as the pandemic hit, our business is really focused on low volume, high value transactions. So at a time when we were drawing a lot of our credit facilities in kind of early uh, 2020, it was, it was great to have that click of a button on your uh, treasury management system, access to uh, the real-time data. So kind of after that, throughout the course of 2020, working closely with JP Morgan and Salmon, we began the process of pulling intraday um, transactions directly into TMS. So that has been uh, quite successful. There has been uh, a few bumps along the way that no doubt we'll, we'll get onto later, um, but it has been uh, a fairly 
successful operation with JP and uh, Salmon. I suppose our next steps uh, along the lane, along the same lines as Yanko is that multi-bank uh, reporting. We have a portion of our, our bank accounts reporting with JP Morgan. We have another larger portion uh, reporting via the multi-bank. So that is the next key step for us is getting those multi-bank uh, reporting across the line. Very good. Very interesting to hear and also very good to hear that you interfaced with your uh, treasury management system, which would be very good. Um, I have, a, I have a, a very interesting question here, uh, actually directed at, at uh, Janko. It's a good one. Um, because you mentioned as well um, uh, about the challenges and we hear a lot about APIs and when, you, and when it's often sold to, sold to the corporates and when you read about it, it's almost like a plug and play solution. Yeah? Um, um, so I would like to ask you, did, did, did you uh, experience the API as a plug and play solution or were there significant challenges that you had to overcome? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm very interested to see what Patrick says in, in, in regards to in integrating it also in the TMS, which for us is the next step when we finally are on S for HANA. But for the time being, I can say um, it, it was a big plug and play. It worked really within a few weeks only. The important basic part was to exchange some security certificates between our IT guy who is responsible for this part the security officer, so to say, and, and JP Morgan. And then we just received the Excel uh, plug-in and started it in, in, in the Excel environment. Again, one or two small uh, uh, bits and pieces to be done by IT, but then it, it really starts to, to feed the data. You Not much to sign in regards to contract, a bit of course, but not too complex and not too complicated. And um, to make sure it doesn't, you know, harm our normal PCs or infrastructure, we, we did it on our market data PC, a standalone PC. And yeah, I can say that that worked really easy and fast. And I was very happy to see. Um, but yeah, most likely it depends on, on how. I mean, Excel, of course, was standard for us. So the plugin worked fast. But um, yeah, I really would like to see it as soon as possible in, in, in our SAP environment, of course, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, Patrick, Janko wanted to hear your thoughts as well, so this is your chance. Yeah, so look, similar to Janko, we had the exchange of certificates and, and the IT set up in the background, which was very straightforward. JP Morgan were extremely helpful along that lines. Um, that was the balance reporting piece, which was, it was a very straightforward process. Salmon, as I mentioned previously, uh, looked there. They're a, a small enough operation in, in terms of the likes of SAP or Kariba or Wall Street system. So we were lucky in that they had a lot of resources that they were willing to commit to this project. So it was a, a fairly um, streamlined process and was easy to get up and running. The, the kind of um, longer um, term project in terms of getting intraday transactions was more difficult. And as you can imagine, we hit a lot of stumbling blocks uh, along the way in terms of the the reporting on the um, JP Morgan side didn't have unique identifiers for each transactions. And as they switched from prior day to current day uh, or current day to prior day, there was a bit of, um, I suppose, work required on the TMS provider end um, to get a workaround to basically have a unique identifier uh, to ensure that there isn't duplicate reporting when they do that switch. So look, a lot of back and forth and um, troubleshooting between ourselves as the customer and, and JP Morgan and, and uh, Salmon as the TMS provider. But we look, we got a solution. I do think that the, the longer term solution is um, getting the bank and look, I, I get it. The JP Morgan machine uh, takes a lot of, I suppose, pressure to change something on the back end in order to um, I suppose, accommodate our requirements. But the long-term solution for this, in my, in, in my view, for it to work at the TMS interface, which is what we all require, I, I think, for it to, to be a long-term replacement for the MT, uh, is for them to, and this goes uh, across the field for all banks, is to have a unique identifier for each transaction at the bank end. Um, so look, to kind of round out on the question, uh, the the balance reporting interface on the TMS side was great. I'm, I'm biased. We had a we were lucky. We had a TMS provider that was there at hand to to facilitate this for us. The intraday piece is 
is still a work in progress, I think, to find a long term um, solution. Okay, and that's, that's another question as well, but we ought to, let's, let me rephrase that a little bit as well. Um, your, um, both of you, and I think, uh, Tanya, you worked with more than one bank when you did your supply chain finance integration. Um, um, did you have, uh, Tanya, did you have just one API or you had an API with several banking partners at that stage? We had a few, we had a few APIs um, mm -hmm. and uh, API is, uh, uh, so it, 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 the design of an API um, has a large impact on um, on what you are doing. So, uh, so um, Yanko and Peter were mentioning how uh, Patrick, I'm sorry, were mentioning how um, JP Morgan is working to cater to their needs, which is I completely understand, and and because it depends on how you like. I know that they were moving uh, from allowing um, the accounts uh, balances uh, availability to through APIs, then they're, they're moving to the payments. So it's like, they're, I think they're building different APIs. So when we say API, it does not necessarily mean like one channel that you retrieve your information from, um, they can be multiple channels. So, and of course, different banks would have their own and they may design it a bit differently. So there is not that much value in comparing like between the banks, but rather moving into the standardization space with this, I think. Okay, and this is also, and I believe that both Janko and Patrick, you, um, you only have one interface with one bank, rather than having separate interfaces with several banks. Was that a, 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 a conscious decision to go into the one bank route because then you only have to integrate one API or, or so this was a short term and are you thinking about setting up with, with, with several, separate banks, separate API connections? What's your thoughts on that, uh, Janko? So for us, um, JP Morgan was the start and now with multibank, we hopefully are also able to use the same channel, one API from JP Morgan to us, but in the back end have HSBC and perhaps also Commerzbank in our case to answer also the question, um, have feeding data um, also to JP Morgan, so to retrieve it via the same API into our Excel plugin. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, in parallel, I mean, I don't want to have, of course, a bank collecting data from other banks for me. It's not about security or privacy in this case. It's not so relevant to see this data. That I don't have a fear here, but in the end, of course, I want to own uh, this, this knowledge and the solution. And that's why in parallel, our um, EDI middleware guy at Autoneum, who is managing the EDI communication to um, outside of the company, where also our payment streams and statement collections via our Swift Service Bureau are going through. He, he supports us and said, well, we have SAP CPI cloud platform integration as a tool to collect such data. Let me try in parallel to work with JP Morgan, HSBC, Commerzbank bilaterally to see if we can also retrieve the data direct. Then we, we are, you know, we can in the end, we in the, in the long end, we are independent of this bank solution by JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. But in, we want to detail, analyze both. On the other hand side, and, and that's an important part from, from Tanya, you will realize then that, of course, there's not so much standardization yet. Why multibank is really attractive. Or we need to look for a standardization. And I know we talk about this a bit later. Uh, so to, to summarize, we are indeed having a look at multiple banks. We try to follow both ways, having it collectively retrieved via JP Morgan, but in parallel, see if we can easily, let's see, again, plug and play, also integrate Commerzbank and HSBC directly to our system. Okay, very good. Um, and I think one thing I wanted to, and we, I think we, we, we covered quite a lot on this as well, is um, um, how um, how was the real the uh, interaction with your banks while while setting up the APIs and uh, coming back to this plug and play? Um, 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 did you engage? Because I think uh, Janko, you 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 tried to set up bilaterally with several banks, and I think you had different experiences with different banks as well. Different some of their banks have a different approach to APIs. APIs, um, and then, then, then the main question would really be: uh, What do I would like your opinion on? Uh, is um, um, are banks actually overselling APIs 
um, uh, because the uh, it's 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 being marketed as a very um, 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 one-stop solution for your problems. Um, um, and uh, is that really the case? Uh, uh, and are we there yet when we can say, well, it's actually a brilliant solution that will solve a lot of our problems? Um, Patrick, can I give this to you first? Sure, yeah. Um, so, look, we, we also kind of partnered or are partnering with another bank um, in terms of that API solution, but I suppose we're, we're different in that we, we don't have a uh, vast amount of uh, banking partners to, to deal with, lucky, unlucky, um, whichever way you, you might look at it. Um, so look, like Yanko has said, the, the main driver for us, I'd say about 70% of our, our bank accounts or, or probably a little bit less are, are through the multi-bank at the moment. So the real win is, I suppose, getting that solution in place. And as you've uh, rightly pointed out, it is the key to the multi-bank solution is standardization and again to kind of come back to us doing another kind of host to host um, solution with one of our other banks is that we've already kind of gone down the journey with JP Morgan on the interface solution with Salmon so like we would as we start that journey we're, we're not looking to reinvent the wheel we've already gone through this journey with JP Morgan so we are kind of reliant on uh, BNP or the other bank we're looking at at them being somewhat flexible to the, I suppose, hard work that we've done to get that interface in place with JP Morgan and leverage off that. Um, and how difficult is that? Because you spend all this time setting up an API with one bank, then how <coughs> difficult is it to actually set it? Is it a whole new project again? You have to start yeah. from scratch or yes. are the banks willing to be flexible? Yeah, so we, we don't know the answer to that question. So we're at very early stages, but my my thoughts are that yes, it will be another kind of large scale project, unless they are, um, I suppose, and maybe they are, and hopefully they are, they're willing to kind of bend to the requirements that we've already set up, because you can be guaranteed that uh, one bank is not reporting the information in the exact same format as it will need to be mirrored in the exact same format as JP Morgan. So um, I think there will be um, I suppose a lot more work, I'm hoping, that it won't be as much work. You would have to hope that we have the back broke um, given the 18 months that we spent on getting um, it to a great place. And don't get me wrong, it is in, it is in a great place with, uh, with JP Morgan and, and with Salmon. But I do think um, the solution is standardization. And I, I've seen this, the, this question pop up here to my left on the screen. So like it, it does require, I think, uh, a formal industry standard uh, like uh, we, we discussed kind of on our, our, our call last week, uh, something like Swift coming along and taking taking the bull by the horns essentially and stewarding um, this um, so that we are able to get this, um, I suppose, worldwide solution or industry standard solution. Fantastic. Janko, I know you have some thoughts on this as well, uh, especially yeah. around standardization requirements. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just briefly to get back about this topic, are the banks overselling? I just can say JP Morgan indeed is, is, is presenting this to us or was presenting this to us as some, something really cool and working and easy. Uh, they are selling it, but I have to say they sell it before because they have it under control. They really do a good job here. Other banks like HSBC, they are also interested. If if you if we, once we approach them, they said, yeah, let's do it. Let's have a look. Other banks are saying, yeah, we are in the development, we have something, but we realized, unfortunately, it's not so far as we would like to have it. So I, I think some banks are really selling it, but um, the banks I have seen which are selling it, they have really some, some good uh, job done. Uh, and the others are sometimes lagging behind and not pushing it so much out in, in the window, I would say. And um, in regards to standardization, um, I think especially this question on, on ISO standard, like Patrick confirmed, Yes, um, exactly with HSBC, we are talking about delivering this data feed in the format of ISO in, in the CAMT 022, uh, 052 or 053 format. Somehow you need to transfer this real-time data and um, we, we bank on CAMT for this. And in regards to standardization, yes, um, we, we had this discussion in our prep call last week. Swift mentioned to me now, I, I think uh, twice, that they want to present a, a standard on API and they are working on this and, and, and most likely come out with an update or some news in March. And um, with our SWIFT Switzerland uh, relationship manager, 
we are in contact about this because this is exactly the point. We, we realize, for example, that Commerzbank is completely seeing this different that, than, than, than HSBC and, and uh, perhaps also than JP Morgan. And so, yeah, if we really are able to go by our standard, that would be that would be perfect. So standard in regards to format means, for example, ISO, but also standard in regards to channel. Yeah, so that you don't have to, you know, restart the wheel, reinvent the wheel each time. So there's, there's a lot. If this is coming, then I think API will really see a lot of breakthroughs. Um, but without standardization, you again build your, you know, 10 time host to host solution, which you don't want in, in these times anymore. But um, yeah, let's see how this how this will develop. I think that will be a, a, a key point. To, 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 to open or not open perhaps the future for, for APIs for corporates. Fantastic, very good. And this opens up very nice intro to my next question. Um, Tanya, if I can direct this to you. Um, if we look into the future, yeah, and we look at about five years from now, um, uh, and uh, of course, let's assume we have this standard. What do you think APIs will look like um, uh, in, in five years from now? And as I see as well, a lot of, as we heard from Patrick and Janko, a lot of the um, um, uh, ways that APIs are used are just for c collecting balance information, uh, prior day and, and, and real time. Um, um, what do you think, or what are your, your, what is your vision? What does your crystal ball say uh, about APIs in about five years when perhaps there is a, a global standard? And this is a great question. Um, yes, so, well, first of all, let me say that API is not a product on its own. And uh, all this discussion around standards is critically important um, and, um, and, and what role SWIFT can play in all this. I would like to bring a bit of a US perspective maybe here because I'm hoping that's why I was invited. So um, I think that the difference between the landscapes is, is, is tremendous. And uh, uh, open banking is uh, the European requirement and, and directive. Um, th there is no such thing for the U.S. banks. On the other hand, the payments landscape in the U.S. is very diverse already. So there are different options for customers. Also, I think that fintech companies um, might play a big role in how APIs, uh, bank APIs, are going to develop. Uh, because as we discussed, uh, and, and uh, I 100% agree uh, with uh, the, the point of um, how hard it is to go from host to host to connections and like from API to API between different banks and like as a corporation and try to make sense of all this on like in your internal systems. So maybe uh, fintech companies would develop products that are going to be just easily consumed by the uh, corporations. So I'm hoping that uh, either, and it doesn't really matter who comes up with the end products for, for the customers. Um, I, some people, like there is a mindset when you think, okay, if I partner with someone, they're going to take my share of the, of the pie. But there is another way of thinking about it. Like if we all partner together and try to work together, um, achieve the synergy, we might um, make the pie bigger. So um, the, the whole, you know, the whole market is going to expand and just uh, provide more value to, to, to the customers. So I'm hoping the future will, will get to the real time, uh, you know, personalized and data-driven um, services that we would be able to, um, to obtain from any, you know, any partner, either, either our bank or our like TMS or another FinTech that would just provide this to us and uh, not worry about um, building all these integrations, uh, you know, with, uh, with our partners. Fantastic. Um, Patrick, your view on the future of APIs. Yeah, again, not to kind of labor the point, but the key here is standardization. I do agree with Tanya, however, in that like the fintechs would hold the key here. I I just don't think that um, corporate and, and look, this is more of a historical thing where we're fairly slow to adapt or to accept these new groundbreaking technologies. So I don't think that it will be too forthcoming. Um, I think the multi-bank solution, if we can get the, the standardization across the line, um, will kind of be the key for um, for the corporates in the in the near term. Definitely the mid to, to long term, I think the fintechs would, would hold the key to kind of bringing this real-time 
um, solution that bit closer and that bit quicker. Fantastic. Uh, Janko, we're almost out of time. Um, yeah. Two thoughts from you. What would you like to use APIs for in the future? You've got about 10 seconds. Yeah, that's fine. So Martin Runoff from Barclays mentioned in the session about payment landscape earlier today that he's not sure if APIs can be a real core channel for corporates in the future or if they are. I, I would say it will become a core channel. It could really support or at least, you know, enhance the system. I, I think standardization, that, that will be critical. And then we can also get more out of these APIs, for example, more on the on the side of, of you know, security, uh, payment security, transparency. So a, a lot of benefits Fantastic. could be coming up here. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We're actually out of time, but I would like to thank everybody. Uh, thank my panel for their fantastic contribution. This re uh, session is recorded. So you can watch it again for the next 14 days. Please continue the discussion uh, and chat directly with our participants as well uh, on the forum. I would like to thank you all for your participation and uh, thank you all for attending the ACT Cash Management Conference 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.